Growth stocks are out of favor, and the results for certain growth ETFs, and I promise not to mention any names, have been straight puke-worthy. Actually, I changed my mind, and I will mention some names. Today's ETF battles an audience requested duel between growth ETF heavyweights. We've got ARK Innovation ETF going up against the Fidelity Blue Chip Growth ETF. So which ETF is the better choice for growth investors? Find out right after this. This is ETF Battles. I'm Ronda Leggy, and we're glad to have you with us. Season three of ETF Battles is almost over, and I want to hear from you. How have you enjoyed this year's ETF Battles? Do you have a favorite particular episode? Post your comments in our YouTube comment section below or on our Twitter feed, at ETF Guide. Both places are also where you could send us your ETF battle requests. Be sure to include your ticker symbols. Now, be sure also to visit the description section below. We've got links to our program sponsor, Direction Investments. Plus, join the waiting list for our new margin of safety investing tool. Again, check out the description section below. Today's ETF battle was suggested by a viewer by the name of James Avery. He wanted to see the ARK Innovation ETF, ticker symbol ARK, go up against the Fidelity Blue Chip Growth ETF, FC. I'm sorry, FBCG is the correct ticker. And congratulations, James. You win your choice of an ETF Battles shirt or coffee mug. Visit the description section below to claim your prize. So judging today's high-stakes contest is a formidable duo. We've got Cynthia Murphy with Toroso Investments and Shana Sissel with Banrian Capital. Judges, welcome back. It's great to see you again. Hey, Ron. Thanks for having us. Great to be back. Always love being on with Cynthia. So our four battle categories are cost, exposure strategy, performance, and then our mystery category. The mystery, of course, is where our judges could pick a single factor or multiple factors that they are feel are crucial to today's contest. And it's a surprise. That's why it's a mystery. Our judges can also nominate wildcard ETFs if they feel there's better choices elsewhere, or they can opt for split decisions. Keep in mind, none of the battle outcomes are ever predetermined or known in advance by myself or our judges. So we're going to kick things off with Cynthia for our first category. Please get us started. So cost is our first category. And um, the Fidelity Fund, FBCG, costs 59 basis points and expense ratio, which is basically 59 bucks per $10,000 invested a year. The ARC Fund is 75 um, and, you know, if you're going to look at uh, trading statistics, you know, the ARC Fund tra trades something like 100 times the average daily volume of the Fidelity Fund. But, you know, at a face value, I'm going to give it to the to Fidelity FBCG uh, just for that expense ratio differential. They're both active, so they're both a lot more expensive than anything you could have in the passive space. So um, they're, they're both pretty pricey, actually. Shana, you're up next. Give us your take on cost. I agree with Cynthia. The ARC fund at seven billion and Fidelity's at four hundred and thirteen million. Um, but I think it's an important uh, to note that um, this FBCG fund is basically a hung share class off of a very, uh, mutual fund that has an extremely long track record. And so it's being managed pair pursue. So even though it doesn't seem like a lot of money, the assets are being managed by the same manager. I don't know for certain if it's pooled uh, with those assets, but it is virtually identical and it's being managed in the same way. So Fidelity is able to use their scale and the fact that this is essentially a pair pursue product to that much larger fund to be able to, you know, uh, get trading uh, efficiency and things of that nature. So I agree with Cynthia. This is uh, the Fidelity Fund wins in cost. Exposure strategy is next. Shana, you're still up. Which of these two ETFs wins? So I think it's really important to note that uh, the Fidelity product is non-transparent. And that actually brings it back to the fact that this is basically another share class for all intents and purposes of the Fidelity Blue Chip Growth Fund. And so they don't want, uh, and there's regulatory reasons they cannot have a fully transparent product. So that has some issues. It's harder to replicate. I think 
any given month, the difference in the basket between the creation basket and the actual basket is only 75% is what they said. So that that's problematic in my mind. To the same sense, uh, it is a much more diversified product with 280 holdings versus the ARC fund, which is 34. Now, here's an interesting part, though. They have a similar concentration in their top 10. 52% for Fidelity, 59% for ARC. So even though the Fidelity Fund has substantially more holdings, the actual top 10 concentration is virtually identical. And then there's the third aspect that really makes these two funds very different. The Fidelity Fund is very much a large cap fund, uh, and it's, it's very much large cap uh, growth, uh, whereas ACC, uh, the ARC Fund is actually more mid cappy. And so the underlying holdings and the composition of the portfolios are quite different. I like that, mid-cappy. I always enjoy when people invent new monikers. Thank you very much, Shana, for that outstanding analysis. Cynthia, you're up next. Give us your take on exposure strategy. Yeah, I agree. Uh, the the non-transparent element makes all of this very tricky. I mean, at best, you get a peek at a proxy basket that is disclosed, you know, not that often, and you're getting a glimpse of holdings that are reported a month in with a 30-day lag. So there's a lot of guessing game here on what this exposure actually looks like. I think the overlap with ARC is relatively small from different data, you know, stats that I could gather given how little we know about the portfolio. So all of this to say that in an exposure battle, which one is best? Uh, just for the sheer fact that you can know what you own, I'm going to give it to ARC because I like to know what I own. And uh, the Fidelity, uh, it's, you know, trust your manager type of knowing what you own. And I prefer to, to have that transparency. So just for the fact alone, I'm going to give it to ARC. Shana, I just wanted to confirm that you chose ARC K for exposure strategy or did you opt I for split decision? I, I opted for RK for exposure okay. strategy. Perfect. I just wanted to make sure that I got that right. Cynthia, back to you. Thank you very much for your take on exposure strategy. We're going to move next to performance. So you're still up. Cynthia, please give us your analysis. Yeah, overall, it's been a really, really, really rough year for growth investors and in just about any portfolio you choose. But the Fidelity Fund has performed much better or a lot less worse than the ARC Fund. I think the differentiation was like 30 percentage points or something over year to date. It has also held better in the last year, held better in the last three years. So, uh, you know, just from a, a total return perspective, uh, Fidelity has done much better. FBCG wins. Uh, I also think it's always important to notice volatility. I think the ARC Fund, uh, from what I was looking, is like at least twice as volatile on a daily, 20-day, 60-day, any metric you look at. Uh, as the Fidelity Fund. And volatility isn't a bad thing. I mean, a lot of traders, a lot of investors make a lot of money off of volatility. So, But you just have to be prepared for a performance that is a true thrill ride relative to the Fidelity Fund. So this year, they both have done very poorly, but Fidelity has definitely the edge. So I'm going to give it to FBCG. Great point, Cynthia. RK pretty much comes with a free roller coaster ride. Solid points. Thank you again. You're up uh, next, uh, Shana. How do you see it when it comes to performance? I agree with Cynthia. Um, the Fidelity Fund has significantly outperformed ARC. I actually, when I was doing my analysis of the Fidelity Fund, I, I, ha I, I have in depth inside knowledge of how these things work at Fidelity from having worked at Fidelity for eight years. So I, I actually based a lot of my analysis on the mutual fund uh, because there's a lot of information for that, whereas this is actually kind of like a hunk share class. So it, it appears like it doesn't have a track record when it really does. Even over the longer time periods, if you compare the ARC fund to the Fidelity mutual fund version of this ETF, uh, the ETF um, for Fidelity does significantly better. So for me, uh, smoother ride, better performance, uh, no, you don't have a you know, celebrity uh, portfolio manager, at least not anymore. There used to actually be somebody uh, extremely well-known that ran this fund. Uh, but, you know, it is a better and smoother ride for your growth exposure. The mystery battle category is next. This is where our judges can pick a single factor or multiple factors to make their arguments. So, uh, Shana, what is your mystery battle category and which of these ETFs wins it? 
So I'm actually, um, this is actually one of my biggest pet peeves, if you will, uh, with some of these actively managed funds and ARC sort of is the poster child for this. Um, I have a substantial problem with the highly concentrated nature of the ARC fund and the fact that it is fully transparent. What we have seen happen is because it is fully transparent and it is because it is so, so concentrated, it can be front run very easily. Uh, and as a result, um, it has gotten so large for its concentrated nature, the fact that it is an ETF wrapper, so it cannot be closed, and the fact that it has to have complete transparency, uh, you know, on the hour, quite frankly, um, there's so many problems with that that can lead to functional problems with the performance of the fund, even if the fund manager is talented. So for me, that makes me not want to invest in the product. It is just too much market manipulation that can occur through front running uh, and the like with this fund. Uh, the fund moves the market substantially when she makes an investment into any one holding or if she has outflows, same thing. Uh, so I would not want to invest in the ARC fund. And for me, I much prefer the Fidelity product to avoid those kind of market structural issues that are problematic and have, you know, it's not a reflection of Kathy Wood's talent as a manager. This is just structural problems with having an active, totally transparent, highly concentrated portfolio at $7 billion. Great points. Thank you, Shana. You're up next, Cynthia. What is your mystery battle category and which of these ETFs wins it? Um, I was going to go with, um, you know, bang for the buck uh, as a category and introduce a, an alternative here, which is JGRO, J-G-R-O, which is the large, actively managed large cap growth from JP Morgan. Uh, it's 35 basis points, so it still has that kind of pricier, actively managed price tag, but it's cheaper than both these funds. It has a lot of overlap with the Fidelity product, a little less so with ARC, because ARC is it's a beast of its own. And um, it's, it's just, if you're really into active growth, you're looking for that manager, JP Morgan is really well established as well. And it's offering a similar experience for, you know, almost half the cost. So I would consider that as an alternative. Now, in the large cap growth, there are so many ETFs in this category. You really can just go many ways with this. Uh, this is just one of the alternatives out there that I think would be just, you know, just something to consider as a, as a different way to approach the space. Yeah, and I think that's a good nomination, too, since it's actively managed like the other two choices uh, in today's contest. So that's a good nomination for your wild card. Thank you very much, Cynthia. So let's give our judges one final chance to weigh in with their overall battle winner. How will this go down? Give it to us, Cynthia. Who is your winner? You know, it's it's a tough one because to me, like if I really going to go by the numbers, it would be a split decision. That said, I think um, for where we are today, I like Fidelity a little bit better. So just for the sake of having a winner as opposed to a split decision, I'm going to give it to FBCG because it is your large cap, your blue chip growth. It has some of the big names everybody wants to have in their portfolio anyway, your Teslas, your Microsofts, your Amazons, all these names. And uh, it's a less volatile, it's less dependent on, you know, the, the startup craze and all the disruption story. It's just, it's a growth fund in a more classical way. And so I think it's a little bit of more longevity in this crazy market environment. It's performed better. So for the sake of ending with a winner, I'm going to give it to Fidelity. But it could, it's very close to a split decision. Thank you, Cynthia. Shane, your final chance to weigh in with your overall battle winner. Give it to us. So I have a split decision, but it's not a split decision between the two contenders here. It's a split decision between one of the contenders and a wild card. Uh, and I want to offer the wild card because if you are one of those people that wants the sexy Kathy Wood type of exposure, I think there's a better option out there. I like um, FBCG uh, for growth, especially right now. I think it's a smoother ride. I think you get a really high quality um, team in the FMR research, which is a really growth experienced uh, 
team, uh, the research at Fidelity. Um, and I think that the overall that that's a better product. It's lower cost. It actually does have a track record with a mutual fund. And the fact that it's non-transparent, well, there are some problems with that, I actually think, that is advantageous here. If you do want more of that sexy mid-cap growth, that innovation type of exposure, I would like to uh, suggest the IPO ETF, which is the Renaissance IPO ETF. Very similar, but more diversified, not as large, uh, and uh, not as concentrated as Kathy's fund, does not have the hype. So not as subject to a lot of those market plumbing kind of factors that I talked about earlier. And so for me, that is actually my preferred if I'm looking for more of that sexy innovation, disruptive growth. I like the Renaissance IPO ETF and the ticker on that is IPO. So it's a split decision for me between the Fidelity product and the Renaissance IPO ETF. Well, how am I going to score this? Our judges have spoken. We've got two wildcard choices and Cynthia chose FBCG as her winner, and Shana chose the same ETF plus a wildcard nomination IPO as her winner. So should this be a split decision? How will Ron score this? Ron is trying to figure this out right now as he speaks. I guess this is going to be a split decision because we don't have a consensus choice on one ETF all the way. But it was close. So it's FBCG and IPO as split winners on today's ETF battles. And IPO, as Shana mentioned, that one has some performance history. It's been around a while. She liked it better as a mid cappy, if I could quote Shana, a mid cappy ish ETF that has sort of that arc innovation flair, except it's more diversified and a smoother ride. And then Cynthia. Also making her very strong arguments in favor of the Fidelity Blue Chip Growth ETF. She mentioned that that ETF has got a little bit more in terms of holdings, more diversified, 280 holdings versus 34 for RK. And also an interesting point made by our judges is the similarity in the portfolios as far as top 10 holdings, concentration of RK versus FBCG, very similar. So that was kind of an interesting point to me. But great job to both of our judges for breaking down this growth ETF showdown. We couldn't have done it without you. Fantastic work to both of you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Ron. And before you leave, this is going to be the final episode for each of our judges for season two of ETF Battles. I'm sorry, season three of ETF battles. Boy, time flies. I can't even keep track anymore. Uh, but I wanted to give our judges one final opportunity to weigh in with their overall investing lessons for 2022. Why don't we start with Cynthia? What one thing stood out to you as far as 2022, just a fast takeaway or key takeaway for investors? Uh, so I'll give two super quick ones uh, that come to mind. One is just the power of alternatives. And actually, Shayna, we've established she's the queen of alternatives. I'll let her talk about that if she wants. But the idea is, you know, we are so used to things that work in bull markets. And this year it was a lesson in the power of other ways to invest, other ways to slice and dice that go beyond your classic equity fixed income balanced portfolio. And I think we tend to forget because you have to take, it usually takes more education there, it takes more due diligence there. And this year we were reminded of the power of that. The second thing I'd say is just the importance of staying invested. Just today, I was reading a piece of research that was doing, you know, that whole math of the market timing and the folly of market timing. And it showed that if you missed that one week uh, and you picked the wrong week, uh, your performance is 20% worse than if you stayed invested in the market. In the ETF space, we've seen that people tend to stick around. I mean, we have more than $500 billion in inflows this year. So, you know, markets have been terrible. Everybody's hurting and nobody can wait for us to get past this year. But people are staying invested. And I think that's always a good reminder that Market timing, is it doesn't work. So uh, you put a lot on the risk if you try to play that game. So staying invested uh, is always a good lesson to, to remember. 
Thank you, Cynthia. Shana, what are your key takeaways for investors in 2022? Well, um, I like one of my favorite sayings is history doesn't repeat, but it often rhymes. And um, I just recall a year from a year ago, um, having a lot of discussions about meme stocks and Bitcoin to the moon and you know, all of these things. And then people were saying, you know, no, the stock market's just like the tech bubble and like missing the forest through the trees and assuming that like it was the market and tech stocks that were the problem and not some of this more, you know, speculative and not looking for where the speculation was. And you could argue it all you want and people wouldn't see it. And, you know, value, another one, value is dead. How many times have we had a debate in the last two years about how value will never work again, ever? Um, You know, Cliff Asnes is one of my favorite follows on Twitter because he will argue against that with anybody, even when it, you know, clearly isn't going his way. Uh, but the truth is, you know, we always kind of return to the norm. It just doesn't always happen, you know, when you would expect it to, but it does happen. So history may not repeat, but it often rhymes is something that I, I was reminded of quite a bit this year. And to Cynthia's earlier point about alternatives, yeah, this is something I've been preaching for a long time. And I really was turned on to the idea of alternatives in 2008, 2009 during the financial crisis when they became something that was investable for everybody because the 40 Act rules were relaxed to allow for shorting and use of derivatives. And that was never possible before. So they weren't pervasive. And the thing is, they worked then, but then there was, you know, 10 plus years where they didn't work because the market went straight up and everybody forgot the importance of diversification. And again, that gets back to my history doesn't repeat, but it often rhymes in the same way that people forgot about the importance of having bond allocations during the 90s and early 2000s. They were reminded how important it was. And now I'm having important conversations with people who are understanding that alternatives can play an important role in portfolios. And yes, they don't work all the time, but when you need them, they do. And so they want to have those conversations now. And I think that's an important takeaway from this year. Great uh, takeaways, both of you. And we really appreciate having you on ETF Battles in 2022. Look forward to catching up with you in 2023. Be safe and be healthy. Look forward to seeing you on the other side of uh, the new year. See you next year. (laughs) See you next year. Be sure to visit the description section below. We got research links to both of our judges. And while you're there, check out the link to our program sponsor, Direction Investments. I'm Rhonda Leggy. Thanks for watching ETF Battles. We'll see you next time.